Um, first slide, please, Steve. Yeah, the next slide, I should say. Next slide? Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to talk a little bit about coil form materials, which I got involved in in a somewhat surprising way. And you'll note here that uh, that I have a collaborator, John Stanley, K4ERO. Um, John, I, I can't see here, but if your audio is working, maybe you could speak up and let me know that you're there. Okay, you got it. Okay, not hearing John. So oh, I'm um, here. I'm here. Oh, you are. Great. Great. Thank you. Um, so uh, John reviewed the article when it went to QST, and uh, he did a great job editing, uh, John, which I appreciate very much. Um, uh, the one thing John was concerned about was these uh, two loading coils. One of the last things I would imagine that a reviewer would be concerned about in, uh, in, a, in an antenna like this. So uh, John, would you like to comment on your concern about these uh, two loading coils? Yeah, let me just say that uh, uh, any article that comes to QST is reviewed by a number of people. Uh, uh, and any of the 25 or so technical advisors that are part of ARRL can participate in that peer review process. Typically, there are six to eight of us that are actively doing that. And uh, among those people, there are uh, several that are very much down on use of P PVC in antennas, almost to the point of, that some of them are almost willing to reject out of hand any article that uses PVC at all. And of course, as many of you know, an awful lot of, art of antennas do use PVC. So uh, I raised the question uh, because I, I wanted uh, Jay to be prepared if uh, when the article came out for some of the people who are strongly opposed to use of PVC in articles to be able to uh, comment intelligently on that. And so I asked him to, to do uh, some investigations and we, we proceeded to do that. And I think we've come up with some uh, a good information that uh, if anyone who is strongly anti-PVC, uh, he'll be able to uh, give them a, 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 a view of what we've done that will maybe set their minds a little bit at ease. So that's basically the idea. Right, so what I'm gonna present is the work that John and I have done together. And this is, uh, I'll pass this around. This is virtually identical to the, uh, uh, to the PVC coil that's uh, in the antenna. It came from a prototype, but they're wound pretty much the same and it's pretty ugly looking, but it uh, works pretty well. So um, if we could have the next slide, please. So this is what it looks like hanging up in the air. Uh, the, the two power poles are to jump it so that we can use the same antenna on 60 meters, but this is a, a 40 meter uh, with an 80 meter coil in it and then another pigtail on the end to complete the 80 meter antenna and then we jump it uh, to include 60 meters next please so um what's the problem well it's not considered adequate coil form material by some radio amateurs as john was just saying and part of the problem is that it's a polar molecule so it's not a really good dielectric it uh, and i think that's one of the things that people are concerned about um there are two other materials that are better. Uh, Teflon and high density polyethylene are both uh, nonpolar, so they're better dielectrics and they do a better job and should not attenuate or absorb RF as much as the PVC. Nevertheless, as John was saying, uh, PVC is used in lots of uh, homebrew and commercial antennas um, because it's readily available, it's fairly cheap. And uh, in a practical sense, it seems to work. So to collect more information about this issue, John and I compared uh, PVC coil forms with Teflon and uh, high density polyethylene. I used PEX because it was available at Lowe's and uh, fairly cheap. Uh, and I had some Teflon, Teflon's expensive, but I did have some from a previous project. So, uh, so we did a little work on that. So next please. So this is just a statement, I'm not gonna read it, but it sort of states the case uh, PVC, on the other hand, deserves special mention because it's a thoroughly awful dielectric. So that's uh, that's probably true. You probably wouldn't want to use it in a uh, in a capacitor, but uh, it stands up to uh, to 
antenna activities pretty well. Next, please. So um, <clears throat> this is sort of how the, the dielectric is um, expressed, uh, high value and low value for, for uh, Teflon, PTFE is pretty low and pretty close. Uh, high density polyethylene is fairly close to uh, Teflon, uh, three to 20 as compared to rigid PVC, which is 60 to 200. So uh, PVC is clearly an outlier compared to Teflon and uh, high density polyethylene. And that's uh, one of their concerns, go ahead. So uh, there's a nifty program called COIL that you can use to uh, explore how the, uh, the type of wire you're using or the type of coil form you're using is uh, performed. So you fill in this information here, uh, frequency turns, wire gauge, et cetera. Uh, you choose your, your coil form material and you choose your wire, and then it gives you results up here, the inductance, the reactance, the resistance, Q and uh, losses, calculated losses, and uh, self-resonant frequency and wire length computes all that for you. So we used uh, this to get a sense and it works pretty well. Um, others have tested it extensively, you know, 40 or 50 different kinds of coil forms and repetitions and it works pretty well. So we were gonna use this as a model and then uh, build some uh, Teflon and, and uh, PVC and PEX coils that were as similar as we could make them. Next please. Oh, this just says, <laughs> shows a little bit of what, uh, what the COIL uh, program calculates. This is uh, inductance in microhenries versus frequency. And uh, you can see they're slightly different. It's hard to read the numbers here, but PVC has a, a closer range than Teflon or, uh, or PEX, uh, which give you a little bit wider range for coils of the same type. Hey, Jay. Yep. Sure. Back up. Yeah, yeah. Just for the folks watching it, I wanted to know what the yeah. vertical and horizontal so, lines represent. Yeah, the uh, the horizontal is three megahertz to eleven megahertz in each case, but these uh, for PVC, this goes from a little over twenty up to about uh, almost twenty four, so maybe four microhenries across that range. Teflon uh, goes from a little over 24 up almost to 30. So that's got a, about a six uh, microhenry range across that range of three to 11 megahertz. And PEX goes from about 22 up to a little over 26. So again, that's about four, four and a half microhenries uh, across three to 11 megahertz. Same number of turns, same. Yeah, yeah, yes, as close as you can make it. Okay. Yep. Uh, so this is uh, the first experiment that we did. I sent that coil form that you're passing around down to John, and uh, we did some coil calculations, and then he made some measurements. And we were really, really trying to get to Q as a way to compare the uh, the different types of of coil form material. And uh, our coil didn't do as well as the uh, as the calculation. It was uh, uh, John measured it a couple of different ways and got 173 to 250, which is much less than the uh, than the 348 for Q over here. So um, we weren't quite satisfied with that. If we could do the the next one, please. So the other thing that <clears throat> I was concerned about because I had picked this up. Um, modeling antennas is that loading coils dissipate energy because of the wire. And uh, EasyNeck is, a, is an antenna um, modeling program. And when it computes the losses at loading coils, it, it doesn't account for the, the uh, coil form material. So this is independent of any coil form material. So the wires themselves dissipate about 20% on 80 meters. Um, of the energy that you're putting into it. So 10 watts at 50 watts, 20 watts at 100 watts, and, and 100 watts at 500 watts. So that's just based on the coil, not on the form. Um, so, 
Yeah, uh, this, this is the, the 80 meter coil. And it, uh, yeah, on 40 meters, it's, uh, it's almost negligible, but quite a bit, 2.2 dB. Yeah, this this yes, coil. That, yeah, this this coil in the antenna configuration that that I showed earlier. This is right out of EasyNIC. So my point is that even without considering the the material that the coil is wound on, the coil itself is is uh, dissipating a lot of energy. Twenty percent of what you're putting into it. So um, in order to try to make a fair comparison, I. Uh, found these three bits of uh, Teflon PEX and PVC about the same dimension. They're within two millimeters of each other. I wound the same number of turns of the uh, wire off the same spool around them and uh, sent them down to John. <clears throat> and this is what John found. Uh, first, the interesting thing he found was that Teflon did not do as well as PEX. Um, and that may be the quality of the Teflon that I got, or because the Teflon coil form was slightly thicker than the PEX coil form. Um, so these, this is the model, the uh, coil model, and the upper line here, the upper blue line is PEX, and the lower blue line is PVC. And then for the dots, uh, these are John's measurements at uh, various frequencies between one and six, one and five megahertz. And you can see for the most part, they're pretty close together. Um, which is what the model reflects here. So um, the conclusion here is that PEX is a bit better, two to three percent better than PVC uh, in this frequency range, and the measured results are reasonably close to the model results, um, which is interesting because based on the, uh, the information we were looking at earlier, PVC is a much more polar compound and has a much is a much worse dielectric, and yet at uh, between one and five megahertz here it, it performs pretty close to the nonpolar uh, PEX. Next, please. So the conclusion <clears throat> is that um, in nearly identical coils of Teflon, PEX, and PVC, PVC is about two to three percent lower Q than PEX, and likely attenuates RF slightly more than. Teflon and PEX. And compare this, the two to three uh, percent change in Q with the uh, coil form material to the 20 percent difference in, uh, in RF dissipation just due to the wire wrapped around it. So there is obviously dissipation in the, uh, in the coil, but most of it is due to the wire and the inductor itself and not to the uh, PVC. And in fact, in that long piece that I showed you earlier, one of the complaints was that Teflon, uh, that uh, PVC melts. And that's because the wires they're wrapping around it is generating so much dissipation, so much heat, that it's melting the coil forms. So, um, so that's the basic, uh, the basic conclusion. Uh, John, do you have any comments about, uh, about that? Okay, I guess not. Um, next, I'm please. muted now. Oh, okay, yep. Uh, uh, I, uh, I think uh, uh, <clears throat> one of the things that we need to be careful about is if we do use PVC in a place where there are very, are very high voltages, that's where the dissipation factor becomes more serious. Uh, and in a coil, uh, that is not particularly the problem, but uh, uh, there might be other places where you were using uh, PVC to support a part of an antenna that had very high voltages. And that's, that would require an additional study to determine that, and it would probably be difficult to make. Um, uh, one other, but I think your remarks about the, uh, the losses in the wire being far more than that in the form are important. Uh, and uh, if, if in fact the uh, wire heats enough due to resistive losses that it, uh, that it begins to melt the PVC, obviously, then we're in trouble. And that might call for other materials to be used. But uh, I, I think we've pretty much settled the issue that using uh, PVC for coil forms is not a major issue. Right, I, I agree with that. And uh, if we could have the next slide, please, Steve. So, um, 
I've had a, a coil like this and out in an antenna for, yep, like that, for a, a number of years. In fact, uh, the antenna there is a 408160, uh, and it's got two loading coils. It's got one of these for, for 80, and it's got another bigger one for 160. And uh, these are, uh, I'm using that antenna for the for an HF Windlink station, and these are stations that have connected to that antenna between April 2020 and January 2023. And it's a, it's basically an NVIS antenna that it's an inverted V and the peak is at about 30 feet and the uh, uh, the ends are down uh, probably about seven or eight feet. So these stations in that period connected to it, and if we could have the next slide, those stations uh, made more than 10,000 connections and most of them were on 40 and 80 meters. In fact, they were more on 80 meters than on 40 meters. So uh, the coil form in PVC is not doing badly. It's performing fairly well. Uh, the station itself only runs 50 watts. So uh, we're, not, we're not exceeding the, uh, uh, we're not getting up to high power and generating a lot of heat in the, uh, in the coil um, material or in the uh, wire material that the PVC has to dissipate. So, um, yeah, for those who, who want to use PVC, we could have the next one. Uh, certainly it's convenient, it's cheap, and it's, uh, it's um, sturdy, it's strong. This, this uh, Schedule 40 PVC is, is quite strong, and uh, I don't have any problems with it in the, in the two antennas I have up. So if you have uh, Teflon, uh, by all means, you can try to use it as a little bit softer, and I don't know quite how it would stand up to the to the tension that uh, that this gets in an antenna, but it's certainly worth a try. Um, and you could try using a, a PEX. You can get PEX uh, in much larger dimensions than I used. Typically, it comes in pretty big rolls, so uh, I didn't try to to get something this size in PEX because I didn't want to buy a 500 foot roll, but um, but if you use PVC, keep the power down and uh, use uh, avoid uh, higher duty uh, higher duty cycle modes uh, on bands where the power dissipation is likely to be large. So, in this case, on 80 meters, stay away from high power or um, high duty cycle modes. But uh, my experience is that PVC works great for the antennas uh, that I use up to 100 watts. And in fact. <laughs> Truth be told, uh, the antenna that I, we showed earlier, um, I run 700 watts single sideband on it and without any problems. So um, if you use a, a low du duty cycle mode, uh, you can get away with using PVC for pretty high power. Um, uh, John, do you have any other uh, comments as we wrap up here? Uh, just one thing that I uh, noticed in doing some reading on PECs uh, is that it, you're, we're warned against the fact that it may not hold up very well in ultraviolet. Um, that's also a problem somewhat with PVC, but it may be worse with PEX. I, I, I need to do more research in that. But I think that would tell us that if we're going to use a PEX in a, in a permanent outdoor installation, uh, it might be well to either paint it or, or cover it with uh, tape of some kind of uh, uh, protect it against the ultraviolet. Very good, thank you. Yeah, when it's used in water lines, it's usually buried, so so UV is not a problem. Uh, John, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Uh, I did notice that you have an MIT alum call sign. Would you care to give us a little bit about your background? I'm curious. Yeah, I studied engineering at MIT. I uh, got my bachelor's degree. Uh, that was in 1962. And uh, then I, I uh, went on to uh, study theology and foreign languages and cross-cultural studies. And uh, so that prepared me to work at radio stations, uh, Christian radio stations all around the world. And I did that for 42 years. And I've been retired now from, for, for about 10. And I spend uh, quite a bit of time uh, working with uh, uh, ARRL as a technical advisor and editor. And uh, uh, I've enjoyed that very much. Well, you certainly were a big help on this article, and I appreciate that, John. So thanks so much for joining us this evening. Well, it's a pleasure. Uh, John is down in Georgia, by the way. Any questions or comments from the group? Yeah, yeah we have questions. Uh, please wait till you have a microphone in front of you for your question. 
Uh, two questions. One is, uh, could we assume that heavier gauge wire would reduce the coil losses from that source, uh, making it uh, less of a dominating factor? And secondly, is there any information on using ceramics? I, I don't have any information on ceramics. And certainly we could test the uh, your first question using coil and just crank up the, the wire size and see. Uh, see how that does, or also in uh, Easy Neck, we can model it in Easy Neck with uh, larger wire and see see how that does. Easy Neck also, uh, I mentioned it does not account for the coil form material, but it does account for the insulation. So uh, if you if you use wire with PVC insulation, uh, you can account for that in uh, in the Easy Neck model. That coil program is extremely valuable and useful, and it will tell you exactly what you need to know about uh, wire size. Pre program, by the way. Uh, several questions. Um, you're using uh, power poles to uh, switch from 60 meters to 80 meters. How does that hold up in weather? Uh, we're going to find out. I use them because that's what I had in my junk box. Oh, okay. uh, um, another question, uh, did you look at uh, CPVC? Is that, is there any difference in terms of uh, losses? I, I didn't look at it. That's so another can't readily available yep. plastic at the Home Depot. Yeah. Um, and then uh, you keep talking about uh, PVC being a poor dielectric. You just mean in terms of losses, not, not the dielectric coefficient, I'm, I'm guessing. Well, um, yeah, because it's a polar molecule. That's the... But the problem I mean, water is a polar molecule and it has a very high dielectric coefficient. I mean, it, yeah. it breaks down. Uh, PVC uh, has a dielectric, I uh, think, of about three or three and a half. Uh, um, that coil program takes that into account. And someone mentioned uh, ceramics. Ceramics have a very high dielectric constant. So for the same physical size, you will have uh, a lot more uh, capacity, a lot more self capacity. And that means. Uh, that this thing will self-resonate at a lower frequency. All of that is uh, calculated very, very well by that COIL program. We highly recommend it. Oh, and what's the COIL? Where, where can I find the COIL program? Um, I had to dig a little bit. I can, I can send it to you. Yep. Actually, that was going to be my question. Where do I get? The coil program, it looks pretty good. Okay. But I have another one, more personal one, if you don't mind answering. You were you had a, a doctorate in a biology field or a, yes. a different field. How did you jump from there to engineering? Well, I, uh, I've never been an engineer except for briefly as an undergraduate. I uh, became a ham radio operator when I was 14 and haven't had an electronics course yet. Uh, I learned everything from doing and uh, as this kind of thing and all kinds of other things, uh, building heath kits and night kits when I was a teenager and uh, the way that many of us got, uh, got into the hobby back in the 50s and 60s. So, sure. Uh, I was wondering if skin effect was, uh, along the lines of the larger wire and so forth, is if skin effect has a, has any play in this between the different materials as you go higher in frequency? I'm going to let John take a crack at that one. Well, skin effect uh, goes up as uh, the resistance of the wire goes up as the square root of the frequency, and that's due to skin effect. And that again is is all that's all taken into consideration in the coil program. So, one of the things it calculates is the series resistance. It calculates both the inductance, the parallel capacitance, and the series resistance. And the series resistance, you'll notice, will go up as the square root of frequency. That's due to skin effect. John's the engineer, not, not me. I'm curious whether or not these coils could be made out of carbon fiber and how they might affect it. Um, good question. I mean, you can wind a coil around anything that has a reasonable dimension and and uh, strength to withstand the the um, shear of the antenna wire, the pull on the antenna wire, the torsion. Um, 
So yeah, you could try it. And I, I don't remember if we could back up to the coil program. Oh, sorry. I don't know if that one's listed. Uh, so air styrofoam Teflon, polypropylene, plexiglass, Lexon, fiberglass, phenolic, cardboard. Right. <laughs> yeah, wood. A chunk, of wood. a chunk of wood boiled in paraffin wax. They did that a long time ago. Well, if they had it at Lowe's or Home Depot, I might try it. But uh, <laughs> this stuff is like a buck a foot, and you can't go wrong with a buck a foot. So. Cardboard is. Cardboard is, yeah. What's just heavy cardboard? <laughs> I don't know if there's anybody on Zoom that, that had any uh, questions. I know we have a lot here uh, in house. Um, I don't know uh, if anyone not on Zoom has any questions, uh, feel free. Go ahead, Charlie. Yeah, I was just uh, mulling over in my mind um, whether anybody's done some experimentation uh, using a temporary coil form. Uh, styrofoam, I would think, would be considered uh, a temporary form, um, but a form that could be used to form the coil, and after stabilizing uh, the form of the coil, could be withdrawn so that there really is no need for, you know, any supporting material. I, you could, you know, if it's it's within an antenna, you could uh, terminate ends on either side of the coil with a, a, a good dielectric in between the two and drop the coil off of the antenna elements and uh, not incur any stress on the coil. Interesting idea. I haven't tried it, but it uh, might be worth experimenting with. Yeah. Air is the best dielectric you can get as far as losses. Air, yeah. So, um, oh, there's aerogel now. <laughs> I don't know what they're using now, but the old Cushcraft antennas used some, a plastic that looked an awful lot like pin PVC around their uh, traps. Hmm. Any idea what that was? I that don't. Was, that, that was 10 to 20 meters. Uh, yeah, I don't have any experience with that. You could ask Dale. I'm sure Dale remembers. <laughs> Other questions? Oh, Dennis, okay. Not to be provocative, but who cares about no. coils? What's that? Who cares about coils? If I have an antenna and I cut it to my frequency, that's the maximum place to be, right? So the whole discussion about coils is just about fitting the antenna to a limited space. Am I right? Yes, exactly. Okay, so so if so, I don't really like folded dipoles, but I I have a lot that's big enough so I could make a wire wander around, and I don't have to use a coil. Is there a problem with that? If it's not straight, if it's just kind of zigzags, or maybe, you know, you know how sometimes you see inverted L's that sort of get turned on their side, or you see a big H, you know, where you didn't have a coil, right? You just kept running the wire and you ran it in a bunch of different directions, but you didn't have that 20 dB loss right. that you were showing. I'll, I'll tell you why I like the dipole shape. And that has to do with the, uh, with the shape of the, of the radiated energy coming off it. When you start uh, using longer wires than, uh, than a half wavelength or start winding them around, um, I, I know if you start using longer wires, you get, you get, uh, peaks and nulls in the radiation pattern. And I assume that that would also happen if you started moving the wire around because that could create uh, peaks and nulls in the, uh, in the radiation pattern. So that's why 
that's the main reason why I prefer and, and these shorter antennas are designed really for Aries use for emergency communications. And so we, we need to be able to put them up in parking lots and places like that. But it's it's really I, I gravitate to the to the dipole form primarily because of the radiation pattern. So it's not you don't have these peaks and nulls and blank spots. Good answer. Thank you. Uh, very good. Do we have uh, any other questions uh, for Jay? Yep, not okay. seeing anything. Thank I'd like to thank Jay very much for his uh, presentation. That's all right. And I'd like to thank everyone uh, for attending the uh, the meeting this month. And uh, you know, if you uh, if you have a topic that you would like to uh, to discuss. Uh, please email me. I'm still looking for speakers for, uh, for the rest of the year at this point. So if there's, uh, there's something that uh, you'd like to present, uh, let me know. Or if you know somebody who, uh, who has a talk that you think may present to the club, um, let me know and I can track them down and arrange uh, for that to happen. But uh, other than that, I'd like to thank everyone again and uh, we'll see you next month. Uh, will Jay be autographing QSTs next month? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe if you bring one down, Charlie, maybe he will. <laughs> yeah, and congratulations again, Jay, for uh, for the article. Seven three, everyone.